All right, kids, we're gonna be doing the pacer test today. I think you're gonna be running forward and backwards, something like that. Pacer test? Oh, oh no. no! Important to know, uh, a vector A can be represented as either A with an arrow on top, which is a vector A, or a matrix A, A and B, which is their X and Y components, and the same thing for vector B. Now their dot product is defined as a times c plus b times d for vectors a, b, and c, d. Uh, it's also defined as their uh, magnitude multiplied together times cosine of their angle between them. All right, John, you're up first. Oh, I got this. You just gotta run at angles like this, huh? Ah, Do you see? I I got this. You guys are so screwed. I got this. Problem one. If two vectors are chosen without replacement from the following set, 1, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 0, negative 1, 1, and 0, 1, what is the probability that the angle between them is acute? The thing to know about cosine is that when the angle is acute, cosine of theta is positive, while when the angle is between 98 and 180, cosine of theta is negative. We're also assuming that the angle is from tail to tip, because for every obtuse angle in between it, there's also a, an acute angle, technically. And so if that was the case, we won't have to uh, knock out the ones where the dot product is zero, in which is our answer would be seven tenths. But this is just an extra note. I'm assuming that you want us to do the way we did it, so yeah. And then we just do the casework, the dot product for each of the cases, and see which ones are positive, see which ones are not positive, and take the ones that are positive over the total, and that's our probability. Three, two, one, start. Single left should be this sound. One, two, three, four. John, what are you doing over there? No one runs like this, dude. Learn how to run. All right there, Ryan. Don't disappoint me like John. Please know how to run. All right, uh, I can go now? All right, I'm gonna start running. I'm running. There we go. Uh, yep, got the wall. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is that a tetrahedron? Oh, oh my God, I gotta, I gotta find the volume of this tetrahedron before I cross it. All right, all right, let's see. Compute the volume of the tetrahedron with vertices 000, 140, 220, and 331. It's important to know that a tetrahedron uh, can be calculated as the sixth of the area of a parallel pipette. Uh, for this problem, vector A can be represented as the A with the arrow or a matrix of components. The same goes for vector B. You can get the cross product of two vectors by doing the determinant of the x, y, and z unit vectors uh, represented as i, j, k on the first row, and then in the second row, the first vector, and then the third row, the second vector. This part seems kind of irrelevant, but it's going to be important later on. Because i, j, and k are the x, y, and z unit vectors, the resultant cross products will be in the form of uh, with the x component, y component, and z component, or x times i plus y times j plus z times k. Now, the matrix of x, y, and z dot the matrix of cx, cy, and cz will equal x times cx plus y times cy plus z times cz. So if we replace the i, j, and k with cx, cy, and cz, we can get a cross b dot c. If we can show that a cross b dot c is the volume of the parallel pipe in, we can just plug in the determinant of this matrix and get the answer. And also the magnitude of a arrow cross b arrow equals the magnitude of the a arrow times the magnitude of the b arrow times uh, sine of theta, where theta is the angle between a arrow and b arrow. All right, we draw our first two vectors um, from 0, 0, 0 to 140 being uh, A arrow and 0, 0, 0 to 220 being B arrow. And first we can get the area of this parallelogram by finding the, the height which is uh, B arrow times sine of theta and multiply that by A arrow to get the area of the parallelogram. That ends up being A cross B and then zoop, third dimension perpendicular to that plane, uh, you have the vector created by B arrow cross A arrow. And yeah, using that, we draw on the vector from 0, 0, 0 to 3, 3, 1, and that's uh, C arrow. You can find the height of that using C arrow times cosine theta, and then calculate the volume by getting the magnitude of the base times the magnitude of the height, which is the same thing as magnitude of B arrow cross A arrow times the magnitude of C arrow times cosine theta. So the volume ends up equaling B arrow cross a arrow dot c. And from before, we know that that ends up equaling the determinant of the matrix of the three vectors that determine the parallel pipette. And so you can calculate the parallel pipette's volume. You can take the determinant of uh, this matrix and it ends up equaling six. And the tetrahedron's volume is one sixth of a parallel pipette, so you end up getting one. 
I got it. I got the volume of the tetrahedron. Ah! Ouch. Did Ryan just trip over a tetrahedron? I think he did. How could you trip over a tetrahedron? Oh I can't believe yeah, What I kind of kids do you. I get? Yeah, all right. Oh my god. And look, you run like this, right? You, you go over a tetrahedron. See? All right, Ben. Don't trip. Please tell me you know how to run. For a certain particle moving in two dimensions, the velocity is given by t squared comma one, and the acceleration is given by t minus three comma 15 minus three t, where distance is measured in centimeters and the time is measured in seconds. For what positive values of t is the particle speeding up? For the given velocity of t squared comma one, the given acceleration is incorrect. The derivative of velocity would be 2t comma zero, so that would be the actual acceleration. And since t is always positive and t squared and 2t is always positive, then the particle would be speeding up constantly. One, start. Single lap should be this sound. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, Fitness grab chaser tests the multi stage aerobic capacity test that progressively gets more difficult as it continues. The 20 meter pacer test will begin in 30 seconds. A sing lap should be completed every time you hear this sound. Ding! Remember to run in straight line and run as long as possible. Don't have an asthma attack. All right, kids, I think you're gonna be running forward and backwards, something like that. They didn't give me much instruction. Ah, oh, man. Man. <laughs> 83, end of level nine. <laughs> Yo, John, there, why'd you trip over an angle, man? Wait, no, that's wrong. <laughs> 84. <laughs> Damn it, Ryan, my hands are shaking. Fuck. 85. 86. 87. 88. 89. Pacer test? Oh, oh no! no. I, I think I was smiling the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pacer test! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you're gonna do that! We have to do that! <laughs> <laughs> we have to do that! We